This is the Yellow Rum Podcast with Wiggins. Yellow Rum Podcast, episode three. Um, you know, you can't, we've had Ballyhoo in here, Howie, and then we've had Caspa, but uh, it's a Yellow Rum Podcast, so we got to kick this off right, and so we have the founder and CEO with us, Phil. Uh, say hello, Phil. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so uh, we're going to get into it, uh, but we also have on the phone with us Chief Business Development Officer for Yolo Rum, Eric Swanson. What's up, Eric? Hey, hey. How's in it the going? house. Eric in the house. <laughs> E3PO. Uh, he goes by multiple <laughs> names. <laughs> but so I, I think this is a good episode. Uh, Eric is out in Florida. Is that where you're at right now, Eric? You're in Florida? Because I mean, I know you travel a lot. I am. I'm currently in St. Petersburg, Florida. And uh, Eric kills it out there uh, in Florida for Yolo Rum. I mean, he kills it just in general for us for years. Uh, so we'll get into that whole story about how Phil and Eric met and uh, what started this uh, relationship that helped us get Yolo Rum in Florida. Um, but so, uh, Phil, let's let's do a little intro, man. How? Let's talk about Yolo Rum. How you founded this uh, this amazing company, this amazing brand, and then uh, let's let's talk about how you started that relationship with Eric and got that. That going, but uh, how did Yolo Rum officially start, Phil? You know, traveling to Central America and drinking a lot of rum and wondering why people don't drink more rum in the United States. I started out on a personal mission to introduce everybody to delicious Central American rum. So, Yolo Rum achieves that. It's from Panama and it's made by the best rum maker in the world, Don Pancho Fernandez. And we've won 21 international awards to date. Yes, sir. And uh, we're sipping on some YOLO rum right now. We, yeah, cheers. We, we got uh, Phil's, sig- Phil's signature drink, uh, the palm, a little bit of YOLO silver in there, and some Perrier. And uh, you, you, we made some videos so I can actually make drinks now, Eric. I know uh, I know Eric's good at the cocktails, and I, I suck at those. If it's not a Coke and rum, I don't know how to make it. <laughs> No, the videos are crushing, and and the Yolo Rum itself is crushing. It, it it never ceases to amaze me the things that we overcome and uh, the things we accomplish as a team. And with Phil's excellent leadership and the people he has around him, it's like, you know, I hate to use a baseball euphemism, but uh, it's, it's sort of like he has built like a World Series team, and it's just waiting for the the right. Uh, month to kick it all off and uh, grab the trophy but it's crazy how far the videos have come how far the company has come just uh as a whole, I guess is what I'm getting I agree. around to. No, I agree. I was uh, I was thinking, and, I, and Eric, I know you're gonna hate this because you're you're a Cubs fan, but I was thinking of that movie with Brad Pitt, uh, where he, he helps the Oakland A's, builds it all off statistics, Moneyball, Moneyball. Moneyball yeah. And so you you are the Brad Pitt of the rum industry, bro. You're the Moneyball, Phil. <laughs> yeah, Phil is Brad Pitt of uh, the rum. I, I look a lot like him too. That's probably why you guys are saying that. <laughs> Is that six pack, yeah, bro? Is that's it? what. I, frequently, I am told that, so I am not surprised to hear this now. That's why I just I had no reaction. You know, it's like, yeah, of course. Yeah. So you've, you're used to it by I'm now. I'm just so used to it. Yeah, I do. I definitely resemble Brad Pitt. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. After a few rum drinks, man, I'm just looking at you, thinking that I'm fucking Fight Club right now, bro. <laughs> so now you're scaring me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we, I want to get into uh, Eric. Your, your overall uh, as a musician and, and I mean a tour manager now. But uh, let's talk a little bit about how you and Phil connected. I mean that that'll kind of touch upon that. But I think that story is crazy. How did you and Phil? I mean, you're from two different worlds. You're in Florida. We're out here in Colorado. The rum was kind of based in Denver, and then because of you, it's in Florida. But how did that initial relationship uh, get started between you two? You know, I always I always wonder how people have such interesting stories uh, when they tell them, and I'm like, wow, that's amazing that that happened to you. And and this, how Phil and I came about actually is a really interesting story. And I I think uh, it was all by natural cause. But uh, I was working with Slightly Stupid and Silverback um, have for years. Um, previous to this life that I'm living now, I was a graphic designer for many years and I wrapped boats and cars and planes and babies, uh, with, <laughs> with vinyl graphics. And, uh, occasionally I get the call for some special stuff. And, uh, I believe it was, I got an email from Cypress Hill, slightly stupid, seedless and silverback. They all said, Hey, would you be interested in wrapping a van? 
and they sent me a picture of a cartoon. And this is something Dane Holmquist uh, drew up for one of the Red Rock shows, Slightly Stupid Cypress Hill on 420 at Red Rocks. And what they wanted to do is take the cartoon off the poster and drive it onto the stage for access television. And those guys are great about that stuff, too. You know, t- who who makes a cartoon a reality? Well, it's guys like Phil and I. So Phil, in his mixed-up world, um, if I'm remembering correctly, working with Seedless uh, pretty heavy at that time, and uh, having the networking again, the great team around him that was able to pull this off, um, uh, Josh was uh, able to put together this van, so he got an old, uh, what was it, Phil, a, sev- a 78 Chevy. Rat or something. Yeah, it was a 68 Chevy van. Yeah, so he completely... You, re- how did you find that? Did you just like... It was a farm find, actually. We found it in Pueblo. Like Pickers? There were like that couple, show Pickers? But it was a fresh farm find, and wow. it was uh, we had to put a new motor in it. We had actually, uh, when we got this project, we had six days to complete it when they told us we were going to do it. So we actually found the like a band, reality show. bought it. it, was, it we should have really <laughs> documented it after we did it, but it was a marathon. By the end of it, we were all like dying from pneumonia because we had all been working. Like, yeah, because you, you, you're saying the show's probably going down up 420. It's 420, so you're looking at what well, uh, April 14th. They exactly. come at you and say, hey, we want this to be this to happen. So we had to totally rebuild the this van pretty much on the interior and exterior and did an extremely good job at the um, a- 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 absolutely a- and and when let's this is no small feat and i think that we need to uh, kind of focus on how, what a large feat that this was <laughs> and and when i showed up or when i got the call sorry my dog is wanting Oh, I'm sorry. Eric's dog looks like one of those dogs that should be in a commercial. He should be on like the biscuit box oh, for dogs. Like, why can't no. we, can we see a picture of the we, dog? We, we should show you Brad Pitt holding the dog, bro. Oh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Um, They'd be yeah, like, so I get the call about this van, and I'm like, okay, well, I have the same amount of time to prepare large format graphics, which at that time it was not quite as advanced, and we had to leave it drying for a couple days and. It shut down a printing shop here in Tampa for two days uh, to print all the material for this van. So I ball it up or roll it up and put it in a suitcase and get on a plane. And I get off the plane and they're just like, yeah, go down to this garage. And uh, here sits this van and primered up beautiful shag green, lime green uh, interior plush carpeting and uh, disco ball hanging from the inside. I was like, holy crap. Not only did they find a van to match the poster, they got the exact van and built it out to specs. <laughs> that is a reality then, show, uh, yeah. We, we, we spent three days uh, to speed that part of the story up. Phil, every day from, I don't even know, what when we started 6 a.m. to 3 a.m., you know, for three days we spent in this garage of mechanic. Shop. And not even knowing each other, right? Because at this point, I no, mean, it was, it's no, all no. you guys were just the middlemen for for the higher ups. And he, we're sitting there talking at some point, and uh, you know, we're almost through with the van at this point, thank God. And uh, he's like, "Yeah, so this rum," and he brings it up, and I'm like, "Huh, sounds awesome." And uh, you know, talked about long and short of it, talked about me living in Florida and whatever. So. Anyway, the week after, Phil gave me pneumonia, which he argues to this day that he did that. <laughs> I think that we all got it from several places. Like we, I had two ear infections and <laughs> pneumonia when I came home. I'm not kidding. It, it was brutal. It so, was. I was. I couldn't even go to that show. That that was horrible. Yeah. I was so sick. I couldn't even go to the 420 after show. After all that work, you couldn't even see the van drive, drive, yeah, drive out on there. I supposed to be if backstage with the van Phil's and doctor put him on a breathing machine or something. Yeah, I was, was doing so nebulizer bad. treatments. God, that was crazy. We just worked so hard. Like it was literally like we just worked. But you, as you hard still as do that. I, I'm sorry for Eric and for you, Phil, and I think all of us at Yola Rum. It, that's just the uh, the work ethic of all of us. And so I think that that's probably what I mean. Obviously, kindled that uh, that bond and relationship between you two because you had appreciation that you guys were really working yourself to death. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. 
And Eric did a great job wrapping the van. It was amazing. Came in, tackled the project. There's no shortcoming with Phil. And, and when it comes down to it, his, his probably only shortcoming is that he wants to do it all. But anything he sets his mind out to do, he does. And, and I learned from seeing his employees, um, from his other businesses that, uh, all, all of them smiling and happy and, he really has a healthy environment around it. Agreed. And, um, he's he's Thank just an amazing leader, and it's been amazing to uh, be a part of. Oh shucks! <laughs> You're the leader but of Fight sa- Club. <laughs> he says uh, we need rum in Florida, and I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of rum down there. And he's like, yeah, well, what's up with that? And I, he's like, you might be the guy, and I'm like, I don't think I'm the guy. And he's like, I might be the guy. And so uh, he does, Phil does this. have that. Phil can can spot the talent. I think even in the the individual without the individual knowing that they have that talent. Well, you guys are all part of this team. We have like an Ocean's Eleven here at Yolo Run. Yeah. So, and you guys are definitely part of that. Everybody plays their role, but we bring it strong. We have a crazy team, and you guys are definitely a, a huge part of that. And it's by no coincidence or uh, by luck that you guys are here. Like you guys have earned your position in the company and we've done this we've grinded this out over the last five years together and we've achieved amazing things and we're just at the very beginning but now things are really starting to come together i commend you guys for you know sticking to it and having the discipline to be able to say hey we're gonna work on this project and it's not gonna be done today and it's not gonna be done tomorrow but in several years from now we're gonna have this amazing company and we've built it from nothing and you know that's I've, you know, like you guys have, have earned every, every ounce of respect that I have for you. And I appreciate everything that you guys do every single day. And we are a crazy animal. And I say that a lot of times, but we're all of our skills together are unparalleled as far as I'm concerned. Now, now, so the yellow rum, it's been around five years. You're, you guys starting that relationship. You were almost, um, I'd like to say since the beginning, right, Eric? I mean, you've been part of yellow since yeah i think he was probably a year in at that point he had some in the country for sure but it was still we we were self-distributing in colorado and had a few accounts and, and we we're really trying i think phil was really trying to wrap his mind around how you know what, what he was going to do with it he shipped me or he didn't ship me i brought home or however the legal term is uh, <laughs> i wound up with a couple bottles in florida and i took them to a couple places and people were like yeah we like it and uh i don't know if in the beginning they got behind the brand as much as they got behind the people um Phil and the team visited Florida many times, and it's just an infectious group of people. Uh, there's no two ways about it. Um, if we were selling frisbees, when we leave the room, you're gonna love that frisbee. Love frisbees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, well, I mean, so I kind of want to fast forward to to where like Phil saw the potential for a podcast and we started uh, Larry Uncensored in the Yellow Rum studio. But even that relationship, Eric and you, you allowed us to go backstage at Red Rocks uh, for a slightly stupid show. And we set up and, and it never really been done before, but we set up and, and recorded a podcast backstage at the slightly stupid show. Uh, we got to talk to John Phillips, who was the manager for uh, Sublime back in the day, and, and it was part of the Silverback uh, that you talked about earlier. Uh, and so it, that in and of itself was, okay, I need to, for me personally, I need to meet the expectations of what these guys are delivering. Like Phil Phil delivers a great product with the rum. He executes a business on point. And I was like, Eric is a part of an amazing tour with an amazing band, and I have to execute on here. So I think it's very uh, nice to almost come full circle in this moment and be able to say, hey, we got a our YOLO Rum podcast episode three going off. We're not only just talking about the rum, but we get to talk about the history and kind of document that story because this story is so unique. And uh, I, I just think it's like you said, it's Ocean's Eleven, Phil. Absolutely. There's a skill set, Wig, in in capturing. You know, you meet a lot of interesting people in the world, and you just have to remember it. And and uh, there's a, there's a real value to podcasts and how far the technology has come because you do really bring out some details and some stories and like phil people will will pay money one day to hear phil speak he's that type of businessman he's that 
he's that savvy and he's that uh, motivational that he should have his own business. You know, he's, he started from a clay mushroom and a $200 loan, I think. And, <laughs> and to think of all the things he's done, like, and the thing that you can capture it on any level um, for other people to hear is amazing. No, I agree, and uh, it, it's exciting to to see all of us come together and know what's coming next. Because uh, for everyone out there, a lot of you are probably listening to this because uh, there's that opportunity to invest in Yellow Rum. There, we have a chance for you to become uh, uh, own a piece of Yellow Rum. So a lot of you are listening to this podcast, and and you you know the history now. But there is that opportunity, uh, and depends on when you're listening to this podcast. But uh, it's coming out uh, to where you can actually literally get a piece of this company, uh, yolorum.com slash invest. And uh, Phil, do you want to talk a little bit about what that opportunity is and, and, and what people can expect with it? We're actually going to be doing what's called an equity crowdfunding. Um, and that will be on WeFunders platform, which I'm excited to announce. And that's the first time that I've said that publicly. It feels makes me feel funny inside. But uh, <laughs> it's exciting. We're authorizing 10% of the shares of the company um, to be sold to, for a fundraise. We're not just looking for people to invest money in our company. We're really looking for people to help us with sales leads, get out and ask for the product, buy the product, tell their friends about it. But we really want people to be actively in, involved and in kind of like a, a brand ambassador. That's why this way that we're going is so important to us. And it's it's democracy funding. And we're gonna we're going to grow this company up by using people and the same skills that we have, we're going to ask other people to kind of step up and help us do it too. It'll be live and active, hopefully in the beginning of June, 2018, depending yeah. on when you're listening yeah, to this. Yeah, exactly. And, you uh, missed your chance if it's after yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Once in a lifetime. And we're using it as a big springboard to kind of get our brand out there and to build on our brand. And we have some pretty big plans for our, for, for our brand. And we were really pre equity or um, we uh, pre revenue is really what I want to say uh, before this point. But now we have um, distribution nailed down, national distribution nailed down, and we have some really exciting things happening. So it's a good time to invest in us. It's a good time to invest in our company. Can we talk about Yellow the trade? Rum. Can we talk about the trademark at all? You know, the trademark is that was an exciting, that was an exciting journey. We've had a lot of big companies try to kind of keep the little guy down and we were able to prevail in a um, kind of a tort over our, over our trademark. But after five and a half years, we will be um, solidifying our trademark, which is a really exciting thing for us. We've had to actually clear a bunch of people that tried to say, try to uh, lay stake and claim to it, but really didn't have legitimate rights. And we were the first, our website was up and, we had our certification and label approvals from the government and it's our, we own YOLO rum and that's our trademark and we, everybody that knows, knows. Yeah. So that's, it's next level. And then, uh, it's just an exciting time because I think we, as we've been working hard for this moment since the van wrapping with Eric, uh, to get to this, this precipice, if you will. And, uh, I, I think it's just super exciting. And I think that, uh, being able to do this podcast at the same time that we're doing that in, in talking to the audience. Cause I think the more that our relationships grow with everyone out there, the more we can have uh, cool guests, uh, like Ballyhoo, which, which was, uh, because of Eric and, and talk to these, uh, these guests. And I mean, Eric, because of you, man, we've we've had the opportunity to talk to Miles from Slightly Stupid. We talked to John Phillips. We talked to the uh, bass player for Soja. Um, you yourself, you're very modest, and I've been waiting, and I've I've been saying, oh, I need to have you on this podcast. You got to have it on this podcast. Talk about your experience. I mean, as a musician, you you you're now the tour manager for Soja. Is that right? That's correct. So how did you how did you get into the music scene? How did you evolve and and where where was your starting point? And I mean, I know that's probably a long loaded question, but how did you get from a musician in your group E3PO, which I remembered and loved that name, uh, to the point of where you you're the tour manager for Soja? I think in short, you just have to keep it anything. Um, you know, as a kid playing music, I I wanted to do that as a profession and over time life beats that out of you you know things we love life beats it out of you and you wind up going to the mill or to the factory and working and 
I just, I'd leave the music business and I'd try that for a while and I'd go back to the music business. And I just realized if you put, put me in a cubicle, I'll die. And so I found uh, fluid work like through graphic design and things that allowed me to tour as a musician. Um, and then, you know, after 15 years of that, you, you realize that the formats change, uh, the, the market, the climate changes. I decided at some point um, in the the internet era entering the scene that I knew if I wasn't going to be on the cover of Rolling Stone that I still had to be in the business. And that was my happy place. Um, and, and I think it's important everyone find a happy place. So I found ways like Yolo Rum um, to make it work together. I found other ways to make it work together so that instead of one pulling their everything you do can kind of help one another and yolo rum has been very supportive of that and the music business has been very supportive of yolo rum as to where um you know uh, brands pay but six figures to be endorsed by band and at concerts and we didn't pay anything um so we were able to set up yolo rum stuff backstage at concerts and kind of make way for the podcast and etc but the truth of the matter is if you put it in a make demo tapes in my bedroom and I mailed them to a record company from the time I was 15 until God knows when. Um, and finally they just said, you know what? We don't want to sign you, but we're going to give you a job. Um, wow. That's, that's, persistence. That's really- this persistence pays off and, and uh, not giving up on your dreams. I think that's kind of what summarizes that. And now he's like uh, doing some – Pretty big recording stuff. What do you got going on? Yeah, you, that's right. You got the new song, All Right, with Dela, uh, Dela from uh, uh, Slightly Stupid, Kenny Bongos of Soja, Ted from Pacifier, and I mean, you even even the proceeds of that are going to charity. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we have a new track. It's up on iTunes and all those places. It's called All Right, and uh, I started this. I have a million bands and whatever, and I just got tired of all the band names, and Eric Swanson is not a cool name. Um, by any stretch oh, of the imagination. Come on, man. <laughs> well, you know, everyone advised against calling it Eric Swanson. I was like, you know what? It's going to be all right. And, yeah. and and I just I just was like, it's fine. But what I did is wanted to create, you know, people don't pay for music anymore. Um, streaming has kind of... Killed that. Yeah, it kind of killed that. But um, I thought there was still a way to buy music for a cause, not just because... So we came up with this project that's still in process right now, but it's called Lenders of Light. And um, it's it's sort of like a super group. Um, It's an idea that we produce these singles and put it out. And the Lenders of Light project means that all the proceeds will go to charity. Um, And all of the proceeds, if you download All Right, um, goes to the American Cancer Society, specifically Relay for Life. Um, And... uh, Everybody got behind it. It's just a good cause. And it's when you see it shared across the platforms and everybody talking about it, it just feels good to do it. Um, it, it shows it, your love for music. I think it shows your passion. Like you, your whole story shows that, but it, it's not about the almighty dollar, which is what I think drives some of these kids or these, I don't want to say kids it makes me sound old, but these musicians that think, Oh yeah, yeah. I just, I want to be millions. I want to show that bling. And, and you're just about the music and the art. Yeah, I think I think if you do the thing is about anything in life and Phil can attest to this and I'm sure you can too, Wig. Do what you love, but be flexible. Just because you love laying bricks doesn't mean you're always going to lay gray bricks on a Friday. You sometimes have to lay red small bricks on a Monday. You know, it's like <laughs> or sometimes you have to make the bricks. It's you have to be flexible and and I think the real gravity of the situation hit me. At, I'm tour manager for Soja, two-time Grammy nominee, you know, reggae band. They're, I'm a big fan as well as part of their team. I was sitting in my office a, couple, a month ago or a couple weeks ago. It seems like months ago now. And uh, they were like, hey, can you come out on stage? And I'm like, oh, shit, what's the problem? So I get up and I walk out there and I'm like, what's going on, guys? And the whole band's playing the song all right. And I'm oh. like, what the hell? And they're like, get on the mic, man. And I was like, oh, uh, this is awesome. And so we did the song and uh, we finished. I was like, guys, best day ever. You know, this was really cool. 
And they're like, well, we're doing it tonight. And I was like, okay. So sold out show uh, in South Carolina. They brought me out on stage and we did it and they pumped the song. And uh, I was like, holy cow. Um, Dang, so dude. Good job. Amazing. Congratulations, Yeah, man. congrats. Yeah, so the next day, you know, they're just like, hey, it's a great song, great cause. We want to support you, whatever. And I'm like, cool. It was a lot of fun. Best day ever. And so the next day, we're in Atlanta at the Sweetwater 420 Festival. Um, and we are in the shadows of this huge skyscraper with a 20-foot sign on it that says American Cancer Society. And we all walked off the tour bus and looked at each other, and they're like, we got to do it again today. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, it was it was amazing. Uh, Jacob Hempfield, the singer of Soja, you know, in between songs, like introduces the track patiently and compassionately, and uh, we're able to spread the love, man. So it's it's love begotten love with love. That's amazing, and that's that's just the power of music in it of itself, and uh, being able to help others. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And then that that feeling of what was that the largest crowd you 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 were able to perform in front of? Like, was it, what was that like? That that had to be. Were you nervous? Were you, were the nerves go away? Because I know you've been performing for so long. How, how'd you feel? I don't think it, nervous is the right word, but I think uh, twenty thousand people. Um, well, in that particular case, for whatever reason, Jacob decided to have them chant my name. <laughs> he was like, say this name, Eric Swanson. They're like, Eric Swanson. He's like, no, that wasn't good enough. Say it again and articulate. Eric Swanson. The whole crowd's Eric Swanson. He's like, okay, well, that's our tour manager, and we're going to bring him out. And I was like, that was that was sort of momentous, I guess. Um, but I... I Yes, it was the biggest crowd, um, to answer your question, that was. And it's it brought me to tears for more than one reason. Um, we're all affected by cancer, and I'm not trying to bring the vibe of this whole podcast down, but we all have those people in our lives, and uh, the gravity of the situation hits you in different times, and it brought tears to my eyes. And uh, so was it, was it the best day ever? Yeah, probably. Um, it was cool. But you should buy it yourself uh, or stream it a bunch, and hopefully we can uh, all make a difference. Yeah, all make a difference and uh, make an impact. Well, Eric, it's it's amazing what you're doing. I uh, I, I'm hoping you're going to be back in Colorado. Does it look like Soja is going to be headed this way? Yeah, we're going to be back, and in fact, maybe we can get one of the guys on a podcast. I'm going to be in Winter Park um, with the guys here coming up. So, when um, is that? uh, When you guys going to do that? The Winter Park Show, we're, we're in Fort Collins on the 15th of June, and we're in Winter Park on the 16th of June. Well, Eric, you're, you're just everywhere. It's it's exciting to have you uh, just just be part of this as you do what you do. The Chief Business Development Officer, uh, the official title for Yolo Rum. And uh, Phil, thank you, the CEO and founder of Yolo Rum. And what's your title? Oh, I am the Chief Digital Officer. There you go. Yeah. Congratulations to both you guys on that. Yeah, that's a huge deal. It is a big deal. And if deal. anyone does listen to this podcast and trying to make sense of it, um, it, the reality is is the investing it into this company is like investing into a family. And it's it's probably never been done before, which is pretty much our MO. And uh, it's really exciting to be a part of something that feels this good. And, uh, yeah, just go with the flow, check us out online. And, uh, you know, the, we have enough social media and intellectual property out there to entice you. So you never know. It might, out. it might get you to a soldier show. You might be able to go hang out with Eric and, uh, and Phil and me right there at a soda show in winter park. You never know. Yeah. If you, uh, if you listen all the way through this podcast <laughs> and you hear this moment, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hashtag you deserve it. You deserve it. Yeah. Eric. Yeah. Uh, YoloRum.com slash invest. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Phil. Episode three of the Yolo Rum podcast. We need you to like and subscribe uh, and download, and that's going to help us spread this word. And if you've been listening, it's probably because you've been interested in knowing the history of Yolo Rum and knowing the team that's involved with it. We're just three three people of this team. The team's made up of like like uh, Phil was saying, Ocean's Eleven caliber uh, team, and it's just amazing. We got Larry and Kathy 
you today, but we also have everyone behind the scenes, Chris, Sam, and uh, we got Jim Pop. So it's just an amazing uh, team, and we're excited to have every one of you uh, be part of this with us. Uh, YoloRum.com slash invest, and don't forget, download, like, subscribe, and you never know. Next podcast, we might have Soja on here. We, we, we'll figure that out, but uh, you're only going to know if you if you subscribe. So YOLO Rum Podcast, Episode 3. Thank you, guys. YOLO. Yeah, YOLO. Cause it's all right. It's all right. Just free your mind and surrender to the vibe. Cause it's all right. It's all right. Just free your mind and surrender to the vibe. Have you ever wanted to own a piece of an award-winning company? YOLO Rum is giving you a chance to invest and own a piece of the award-winning rum. Visit YOLORum.com slash invest for more details. 